witnesses the sins that we think are secret. That's what this thing is all about. In order to build the nation of Israel back, guess what? Believe it or not, it starts with strong marriages. How you doing today, my brother? Yeah, what we going over right now, we're going over what can you do on the Sabbath day? Like today. Today's Sabbath day, right? We done for Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. What do you think? Why do you think God says to remember the Sabbath day? My brother, why do you think God says for us to remember the Sabbath day? That means he knows that we'll forget about it. Right. Like today. Yes, exactly. This, he knows that we're going to forget who we are. We're going to forget about God's Sabbath. It says, remember the Sabbath day, read. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Holy is to set apart, just like you. The Most High God, you are a chosen people unto himself. Right. He said that you are holy. He separates you from everybody else. But guess what? With that uh, uh, first stop pick, there, there are great uh requirements from you too you can't be the first top pick and then you expect to acting like those that are in the bottom right does that make sense just let's use the analogy of, of uh basketball the top pick players do do they just uh pick them just because or because they are the best they're the best and they apply it they show that they are the best when they get on the court they drop most points right guess what it's the same thing I'm gonna show you where God says that you are the chosen. He chose you out of a bunch. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. I did not make this up. You heard it? Christianity don't teach you that. I got a question for you too, before you go in. I was coming back. Okay, um, all right. He's telling you that he chose you out of a bunch. Did they teach us that in Christianity? No, they don't. Why Why not? Why are they hiding information? What's the purpose? Give me Isaiah chapter 56 and 10. Why are they hiding information? I'm gonna show you what God says. Listen to this. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 10 His watchmen are blind Watchmen consider as the overseer Your pastors of today are considered watchmen He said they are blind To be blind means you can't see before your face I mean before your hand you looking, you, I'm looking at you right here I can't really see you Why? Because I'm blind That means they don't have the foresight A prophet is supposed to be able to see ahead of them Telling the people watch out Judgment is coming like we've been teaching, saying uh, coronavirus, that's pestilence that the Bible teach of. Right. Famine is coming, wars, rumors of war. Those are the things that we preach, saying that the people must repent. That's us teaching God's word as a prophet. But listen to what the Bible says. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. You see what God says? They are all ignorant. They are dumb dogs. Right. That's what he says about them. Before you go, I do have that question for you, man. My brother. My brother. Uh, Berkeley. Call him, call him. I do have that question for you before you go, man. Let me ask you that question. What does that sign that you have in your forehead mean? Peace. Love, Peace. Love. Happiness. You know where that came from? Yeah, that's the old ancient. That's the old ancient different, uh, different problem. Yes. It's the first seven of heart. No, sir. Mm -mm. This this thing came from Egypt. Wow. Uh, um, that the the round part representing the 
they say the woman's womb, vagina area, and the other is, is the rectum of the men. That they consider that as life. They say this is life symbol. Okay? But guess what? You're not an Egyptian. You shouldn't follow Egyptology ways. Because you are greater than Egyptian. That's what I was just telling you right now. You are God chosen people. By you putting, first of all, we're not supposed to put tattoos on ourselves. Don't get it twisted. A lot of us, we used to do the same thing. I used to, I had a, I have a tattoo too, but I didn't know better. But knowing now, knowing better, you're not supposed to have tattoos on yourself. That's one thing. The second thing is idolatry. I'll show you that. Give me that first tattoo. Watch this. Pay attention to that, my brother. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 28. 29. 28? Yes, sir. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. See that? It says you're not supposed to make a uh, uh, cut on your flesh. What they did, give me that one, 21 and 5. What, what, what they did to put the ink on your body, they have to cut your flesh. That's what must happen for that to happen. This scripture will explain it even clearer. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Thou shalt not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. That goes into us not shaving our beard. You gotta let your beard grow, because that's a badge of manly dignity. That's how you can identify a man from a young boy. We nor make any cutting in their flesh. Uh -huh. or nor make any cutting in your flesh. God's telling you don't put tattoos on yourself. That's God's word. Now, give me a, a back to chapter 2, verse 18. I want to address that thing that y'all look for it. Because that's a teacher of law. Our people follow everything under the sun, but what God says for us not to do. You're not supposed to follow these things because you are the greatest thing that God created. Right. Why should you follow other vain glory gods, man? Watch this. Rebecca, chapter 2, verse 18. What profited the graven image uh -huh. that the maker thereof have graven it? Believe it or not, that thing you have, they making chain out of them. Right. They making uh, something that you can hold. They have so many different symbols of the unk. You know what the unk is, right? Yeah, it's 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 very popular. Um, and who they push that on? Our people. Right. They push that on our people. This is not for everybody. Why? Because they know if they keep you in sin, they will continue ruling. They will continue to be on top. Because God says you are the chosen one. Because of sin, that's why we in the bottom. And they know, okay, if they are in the bottom because of sin, the best way to remain on top is doing what? Keep them in sin. That's right. That's, that's, that's easy. Speak very, very well. But that's the wisdom. Hey, that's the wisdom. All in your life. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathan. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. What profited the graven image uh -huh. that the maker thereof have graven it? Uh -huh. The molten image. The molten image. And a teacher of lies. You hear that? A teacher of lies. Does that thing tell you, you say that was, what did you say again when you came in? What was your exact word that you used about the um? Love, happiness. Love, happiness, and peace. And you say something about Christ also. What did you say about Christ? Yeah, that's uh, that's a teacher of lies. Right. The Bible don't lie. It's not. There is no life behind that thing that you have on, but teaching you, uh, uh, this mean this. You know what? Peace. When you get peace, give me that in Isaiah forty. Uh, is it forty-six? Uh, about peace, perfect peace. This is how you get perfect peace. Listen up, because we didn't know. Because we don't know God's word, because we don't know what God's required from us, we follow every doctrine that come around. 46 and, and uh, perfect beast, 46 and something. Um, that, that's what we're here for. What's that? 
Oh, uh, uh, I say it's 26 and 3. Huh? I say it's 26 and 3. Oh, 26. Thank you. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse 3. That will keep him in perfect peace, huh? whose mind is stayed on thee. Those minds that say on God's word would be in perfect peace. Why? I, um, give me Psalm chapter 91. I'm going to show you. Those that are not keeping God's laws, they're not in perfect peace. With, with all these things that are going on, rumors of war, with coronavirus, with uh, 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 famines coming, that's scary for a lot of people. My sister, we are here for you. We are here for you. Come and come closer and see what we are preaching. What we're bringing for, we're showing a better way. Because we've been thinking, we've been getting live for all our lives. Okay? And time is short. You see, the time of, it's showing. You hear rumors of war every, every day you wake up, you hear this country says they're getting ready for war. World War Three is at end. Right. How long is it going to take us for us to take God's word serious? Right. Give me uh, that Deuteronomy 28 and 15 again. Bible says, Deuteronomy. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's your question? Does the Bible say anything about being dead to the world? Being dead to the world? Yeah, like Yes, yes. Give me uh proverb uh tw um proverb 26. 2160. Yeah, give me that. Watch this. And then give me Revelation 11 and uh 8. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 18. No, 16. 21 and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that wandereth, when you wander out of God's laws, what will happen to them? Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Believe it or not, that's a good scripture for you. That means stop wandering everywhere else. The only place you should be wandering is in the Bible. Definitely. Anyone that wandering out of the way of understanding, which is God's laws, you will remain in the congregation of the dead. Bro. Now, let me explain that for you even more that plain. Dead, like your spirit. dead your spir spiritually yeah. and physically. Yeah. Spiritually and physically. Around, Watch this. Yes, yes. Watch this. Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 18. And 18. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. You see that it says, and their dead body shall lie in the city, uh, in the great city. It's telling you, uh, it's not really literally saying you will be on the floor dead. It's telling you, read it again. And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city. What is, what country consider great today? America. America is known to be the greatest country ever. Right. Who wanna, who wanna come against America? They ain't known for that, we. And which spiritually is called Sodom and- Now it's getting you the attributes of that great city. Right. Which spiritually, now it's telling you it's not physically. See, the Bible is clear. It's telling you it's not physically, but spiritually we represent what? Sodom and Egypt. Sodom goes for the uh, homosexual uh, agenda. What country telling you uh, you can be whoever you want to be. America. America, they pass gay uh, uh, laws. You you dare to speak about someone that is uh, 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 have any feminine attribute, you will lose your job and a dime. Yeah, I'm Guess what? He also mentioned Egypt, right. that aunt that you have in your forehead. Did you know that Egyptian and slave you? Listen to what it says. And Egypt. No, 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 no. Finish it up. And Where also. Sodom and Egypt. Egypt stands for slavery. Because when we were in Egypt, what were we doing? We were in bondage. We were slaves to the Egyptians. When you get the dollar, if you take the dollar bill, you turn around, you see what? Uh, they have a, a, a pyramid. To show you, although this is America, they still have all the attributes of the Egyptians. That's right. They still follow the Egyptians' ways. Because they enslaved us just like the Egyptians did. The only thing that they did, they take it to another level because they also learn of all the other uh, uh, nation that, that, that hold us captive. Why am I going there? Showing you, time is too short for you to be wasting time. That's right. I'm going to show you a prophecy. Give me uh, what Christ says. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. This is the word of Christ to show you that you're living the time right now. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, 
take heed that no man deceive you. This is Christ speaking now. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. Why would he say that? Because he know there will be time you will be deceived. Bro. To deceive is to lie to. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Who is this guy right here? Huh? Christ, you see that? It says many will come saying that I am Christ. Yeah. That is not Christ, my brother. That is the devil that the Bible speaks of. Yeah. I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Hold that. Let's go to, um, uh, give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 4 first, and then give me Revelation. I'm going to show you. Christ says it. Now I'm going to show you. Apostle Paul says the same thing. Right. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh, Preacheth another Jesus. He says, if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Obviously, if they're preaching to you another Jesus, they're hiding the real appearance of the real Christ. Would you That's agree? Right. That's what the scripture just said. Read it again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, uh -huh. whom we have not preached, whom the Bible doesn't speak about, read. Or if he have received another spirit, which you have not received. Guess what? That spirit that this guy come with is not the spirit of God. Right. This guy come with an effeminate spirit, a self-spoken spirit. Christ was a loud speaking man. Christ spoke to 5,000 people. Right. There is no way a self-spoken man can speak to 5,000 people. That's another lie. We don't. Or another gospel which you have not accepted. Guess what? The gospel that this guy come with is God people are white. Right. That's a damn lie. That's right. The real gospel is that I'm looking at them right here. God chose the people. I'm looking at them. The true Jews are right before my eyes. That's right. Those that are in Israel today are what you call bastard. That's right. They are not God chosen people. That's in the Bible too. I can prove that. You want to see that? Uh, Give me that. Uh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Hold your question. Hold your question. Read that for me. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. God, Christ saying, I know your tribulation. I know the hard things that you're going through. How we getting pulled over again, killed down in the streets? Are we being the bottom of society? Are we the first one to get fired, the last one to get hired? How we got the worst school? All these things. God says he understands our tribulation. Read. But thou art no, rich. Again. I know thy works in tribulation uh -huh. and poverty. And poverty. We are in the bottom of society. You will consider us as the scum of this earth. But guess what? What did God say? But thou art rich. Christ says, but you are rich. Right. Why are you rich? Because the kingdom is for you. That's right. Only you can get that kingdom. Read on. And I know the blasphemy. Now he's flipping it the other side. And I also know the blasphemy. Blasphemy mean what? I heard that before, but... Start with an L. Lies. <laughs> and I know the lies. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And I know the blasphemy of them that call themselves Jewish. It fed them. Jewish been per, sort of a Jew. They're not real Jew. They're telling them themselves. But we are so blind, we can't see it. Read it again, and I know the blasphemy. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. And are not. They're not the real Jews. I did not make this up. Read on. But are the synagogue of Satan. And they are the Satan that the Bible speaks of. Yeah, Those are not our right. words. Those are God's words. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. 
IUIC, we deliver the truth.